Hello everyone and welcome back to Jimmy Talks Jira. We are continuing our Atlassian Access mini-series. Last week we covered how to change the email address uh, for managed and unmanaged accounts in Atlassian organization with a verified domain. This week we are going to cover enabling and disabling two-factor authentication uh, for managed and unmanaged accounts. Let's not waste any time and dive in. Okay, so before we begin, as always, you're going to need to be an Atlassian organization administrator for your cloud instance. And we're going to go to admin.atlassian.com. This will take us to allow us to uh, select the organization we want to manage, um, which is my organization. And before we get any further, I just want to talk about the uh, prerequisites you're going to need in order to complete the steps in this guide. Uh, so as we already mentioned, you need to be an organization admin. You are also going to need to have already verified your domain. Uh, and if you haven't done that, uh, I have a, a video walkthrough on that one as well. Uh, I will link that uh, in the description. There'll be a card or something somewhere so that you can view that. Um, you're going to need managed accounts. Uh, so the caveat here is uh, enabling two-factor authentication does not work on unmanaged accounts. Uh, Atlassian is working on that feature. Um, there will be a link to that in the companion article for this, as well as in the description to the feature request. It is in progress. It's not, uh, you know, pending um, some sort of waiting for uh, feedback from users. They are actually physically working on this at the time of uh, recording this video. So hopefully that will be something that we'll see in the near future because that is definitely um, a cool feature if they actually get it added in. Um, you are also going to need to have subscribed to Atlassian Access. Uh, the way that we're going to be managing these things is through security policies, which is a feature that's only available with Atlassian Access. Now you can get a 30 day trial uh, at any point that you want, um, if you want to just try this out and see if it's something that works for you. Um, but you will need to have already subscribed to Access in order to be able to even see these features to, to try them out at all. All right, with that, where we're going to start is with this new security tab, um, which is a part of the Atlassian Access features. And we're going to go to authentication policies. Now, by default, uh, the moment you sign up for a trial or the moment you enable Atlassian Access, you're going to get this default applies to all users. It has everything turned off or everything set to the absolute minimum possible. Um, we're going to keep it that way because um, that's what we're going to use for uh, later in the disabling things. So if you don't have an authentication policy set up, what you're going to do is you're going to go to the ab policy you're going to uh, create a name for it. I would use something that is going to be easily recognizable of what you're doing. Um, so as you can see, I've already done some testing here. I'm going to use Enforce 2FA for two-factor authentication, and we're going to click Add. Now, what you're going to see here is our policy screen, where we're able to do things like setting up SAML SSO. That will be for a later time. Um, things like our verif uh, enabling two-step verification. So we're going to check the radio box to required on that. We're gonna leave the password requirements and the idle timeout uh, duration for now. And we're just gonna worry about uh, the two-step uh, verification. So we're gonna click update to change that. And you'll see that it's going to tell us that it's gonna update now. And our policy has been updated. Now, this policy does require two-step verification but it doesn't actually uh, have any members yet. So we're gonna switch over to the members tab and we're gonna click the add members button. Now you have two options here. You can either enter users individually, um, up to 20 users, or you can go with a bulk entry by uploading a CSV of email addresses and you're capped at a thousand users at a time for that. So, um, you know, depending on how many users you're adding to this policy, uh, use whatever makes sense for you. Since I only have one managed account that we've been working with in this instance, I'm going to go individual. We're going to add my single user and we're going to click add members. Now, depending on how many members you're adding, it could take a while for uh, this to add all the members to the, the authentication policy. Um, but since we only added a single member, it should complete relatively quickly. As you can see, uh, you will get an email notification to 
the email address for the admin account you're logged in as once it has finished uh, updating all of those. So now that I have my uh, user here, we are going to just validate that that authentication policy is in place by going to our directory, going to managed accounts, and we're going to click the show details for our managed user. And as you can see, two-step verification is now set to enabled. So that is how we turn on uh, the enforcement of two-factor authentication for a managed account. Okay, so we're going to switch gears now and we're going to talk about disabling two-factor authentication for a managed account. Uh, now, as I, I noted earlier, um, you cannot do this for unmanaged accounts. That is currently an open Atlassian uh, ticket that they are currently working on. And I can't wait to see that functionality come out in the future. So uh, from the admin uh, interface, uh, admin.atlassian.com, we are going to go back into our security settings and we are going to go to our authentication policies. Now we still have this set up the way we had it previously. Um, if you have left the applies to all users default policy with everything turned off or set to the minimums, uh, you can use that. Or uh, much like when we were enabling a policy and we created a new one, you could create a new policy, give it a name such as disable 2FA and set the uh, option to optional and then use that policy. We're gonna stick with what we have and I'm gonna show you the two methods that are available for moving the user to uh, a disabled state, or sorry, moving the 2FA to a disabled state. So first off, um, if you edit this policy and you go to the members tab, we can click the add members and select our member. And then when we click add members, uh, that will add them to this policy. Now, a user cannot exist in multiple authentication policies. So this is one way to move users from one policy to another. Um, this would also be the recommended approach if you want to bulk move a lot of users because the other method is moving users on an individual basis. So if we're gonna go back uh, to our authentication policies, the other route to move them is to go into the policy where that user currently exists and we'll edit that one, go to the members tab and we can click on this change members policy link. And what this will allow us to do is to select in the dropdown the policy we wish to move them to, and we click the change button. And now you'll see a small notification down below saying that we have moved that user to the other policy. And then just to confirm that, we can edit this one here and we can see that they are in fact on this policy. And then the last thing we'll just show, just to confirm that that is truly set the way we want, is we're gonna go into the directory, managed accounts, and we're gonna click the show details. And as you can see, our two-step verification is set to not enabled. Um, authentication policies is the way in which you determine whether uh, things are enabled or not, whether they're enforced or not. And that's all there is for disabling an account. I hope this has been another informative video for you, and please be sure to tune in next week as we round out this mini-series with user provisioning by a third-party identity provider. Don't forget the Confluence Customer Love Month is still happening in the online community. The description will have a link to the article that has all you need to know about participating in that event. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking it, subscribing to the channel, and please leave a comment below if there's anything you'd like me to cover in the future. Thanks for stopping by.